body camera video showing them pulling over Kohlberger and his father on December 15th. The pair was driving from Washington to Pennsylvania, a trip they had pre-planned. Indiana State Police said Kohlberger was behind the wheel when look he was his hand right on there. I oh, look at that. Let me just take down Mike's comment. I've never seen it so clear. Comments, guys? Comments on that in the live Outside chat? Outside of Indianapolis for following too closely. Indiana's police say at the right time there. of the stop, there was no... What was that? I said pause it right there. Yeah. Look at, look, at the, look at the scar on the side of his arm. Jesus. And it looks like a six-week-old scar, too. And then Jeff says, that's a shadow on his wrist, in my opinion. I'm usually the one leaning towards his guilt. Uh, consider the angle of the sun. Okay. That doesn't look like a shadow. Red. <laughs> it doesn't look like a shadow to me, either. But thank you, Jeff, for your opinion. Thank you. And then Jeff says, that's a total shadow on his wrist. There's no, it's not, yeah. Uh, Leslie says, Swamp Rose, look at the bruise. Fine, Leslie. I see it. I see it. Uh, I think the uh, I think the stops were controlled so the uh, FBI could uh, could know if he had any injuries on his hands. Um, Jeff had emailed me another picture of Brian's hand. Jeff says, as a photographer for thirty years, I'm pretty convinced it was a shadow on BK's wrist. Hmm, well, I don't, I don't think it was a shadow. I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot of rumblings that, that both of those stops were controlled stops by the FBI uh, because they because they want uh, they wanted the uh, the the Indiana uh, Highway Patrol to you know, see if they couldn't get a look at Brian's hands to see if he had any cuts on his hands. Do you think his hands looked swollen in that picture? In your personal opinion. Uh, a little bit. I mean, not, not too bad, but I'm, um, I know they showed a, a close up, and on the close up, you, you, you could see what looked like uh, dried blood on the side on the side of his hand, on the side of his arm. But oh, I, I didn't really see tell. that. But I thought the same as you. They looked a little swollen. I couldn't see anything of note. It did. I mean, it looked like the knuckle wasn't showing, which can sometimes indicate someone who's been punching and maybe broke their or pushed their knuckle. But Leslie said it looks like a cut or a sh or it's a shadow. It looks like a cut or a shadow. All right, let's take a look. Hi, Casey. Hey, Casey. Here we go. Hello. How you doing? How y'all doing today? Good, good. Let's take a look at your driver's license real quick if I could. See, he's right up on that van, man. He was right up on the back end of that van. Hold you over for tailgating. Is this your car? Okay. Cool. Where are you headed? Well, we're coming from WSU. And, uh, What's WSU? Uh, well, yeah, I, I so we're okay. I, I'm having a hard time hearing you because of the traffic. So you're coming from Washington State University, and you're going where? Oh. Oh, okay. We're a little, we're slightly clutching because we drive for hours. Hours, days. Hours to drive. Well, yeah. Almost a day. Okay. The reason this was all brought up is we were saying that one of Brian's sisters said something about Brian and Brent early on, and then it has been scrubbed. And so we were asking where we could get that or reference it. And somebody in the live chat said, well, in this stop, it was interesting because 
Brian's father refers to Brent as a criminology major. So that's what we're looking to see if we can hear. We also want to see if we could see the hands. It's not, you know, that we're implicating anyone. But hold on, let's keep going. Yeah, there was, yeah, there was the there was mass shooting. You know. Where? I think he just said criminology major right there. Did you hear it, Robert? We, you can hardly hear it over the sound of the traffic. It's terrible. I know. I, 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 but I just wanted to see if somebody else could hear it. I didn't know if we could. Let's just see if we could hear it again. I'll play the whole thing. So y'all work at the university there? Actually, we work there. Okay. I think he was talking about Brian. Yeah. Yeah, I hadn't heard about that incident just yesterday. Or? Interesting. Wow. Okay. So do me a favor and don't follow it too close, okay? Robert, All right. you're right. You. I appreciate you. I'm 100% right. Okay. When I heard the, back when I said, oh, I just heard it, criminology major, you're right. He was talking about Brian. It was muted. And when they were just talking about Brent, he, I didn't hear him say it. So, but we're going to have to dive into that to see if, if we can figure out what his sister what his sister said. I'm just looking if there were any more comments here. Yeah, that's what we were wondering. Was he talking about Brent or his son? That's what Robert just said. And then Leslie writes about his son. So anyway. Uh, Leslie and Billy said, but if you look at BK's hand, when it's down on his leg, you can see his hand and his wrist. Uh, right there. Where it is, right here. I'll turn the volume off so I can hear you. Yes, near leg, uh, console wrist with long scab, in my own opinion. Okay. All right. Let's go. I know when uh, he, his father mentioned where they were going, B, BK gave his dad a look like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> I've seen that look too. Let me go back. Hello. How you doing? How y'all doing today? Good, good. Let's take a look at your driver's license real quick if I could. See, he's right up on that van, man. He was right up on the back end of that van. Hold you over for tailgating. Is this your car? Looking at the hand, that's all. Car? Okay. Cool. Where are you headed? Well, so that's not <laughs> cut on this hand, but I was. What was that? Or, or I said I thought I saw what looked like a a cut, like it was almost healed on his hand. And it would be at that stage at this time. Let's just do it again. Well, we're coming from WSU. Yeah, What's WSU? Cool. How you doing? How y'all doing today? Good, good. Let's take a look at your driver's license real quick if I could. See, he's right up on that van, man. He was right up on the back end of that van. Hold you over for tailgating. Is this your, your car? Can't really tell because the officer's arm's in the way. I know. Is this your car? It ruins everything in this video. Right there. I see you. I think 
I think this is what we're talking about, this line right here, because that does look like a yeah. um, scar to me, but it looks like an older than six week scar. And then there was one other thing when he hands it back. Let's look at that. Hold on. Interesting. Well, okay. Well, do me a favor, don't follow. It's not much to see. I mean, it's, oh, well. It's worth taking a look at, but it's just. I'm just looking to see if I can zoom in on this. Yeah. Okay. This this is his dominant hand, the right hand, the one that's not holding license. That is one thing I will point out that is a little interesting. Why would you reach for it with your left hand and keep your dominant hand limp like that sitting there? Yeah. Maybe. Uh yeah. Yeah. Sherry says that's weird. Uh, Leslie says Swamp Rose. I believe it's it's in the second stop. Okay, let's get that up then. So what was weird was, is that, you know, this is the first stop, and then he was stopped again two and a half miles later. It is really weird. Hold on, I wonder. Okay, so I'm looking at the first stop. I thought I was looking at the second stop. Okay, hold on. I don't know if it's online. Okay. It almost looks like he's following him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. Like, what are the chances you're going to pull over a sedan with two, one, the middle-aged guy? You know, it just doesn't seem like, I don't know, unless he was just having a bad day and recklessly driving it find it odd too this one doesn't have sound hello how you know how y'all is this the same one so i think it's this one right here recording Hello. How you doing? How y'all doing today? Good, good. Take a look at your driver's license. Yeah, that's the same one. Oh gosh. And then Mike wrote, he was being tracked and followed. Yeah. Honestly, but I honestly believe that he, that those both those stops were controlled by the by the FBI because his uh. Yeah, they got a hit on the tag reader in Colorado. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you guys 100. percent I think I'm buying this 100 percent that he had to have been followed because if you're if I'm working off my theory, he got reported to the FBI long before the 30th. And what kind of law enforcement person would let a quadruple unaliver go driving around the U.S. unmonitored? It'd be it's a it's a threat to, um, if that were true, then they're putting a bunch of people in danger. So I would. Yeah, and there's, uh, there was a rumor that. Uh... Chilling newly released video shows the suspect in the murders of four University of Idaho students talking his way out of a traffic ticket. Oh, this is This was it. last October, just weeks before the killing. Right, the former grad student. No, I watched that one though, and he was very polite through the entire thing. I honestly thought the cop was trying to get his phone number. He that he was driving was later seen on surveillance video near the crime scene, and that helped leak. Okay, and then the, uh, Sherry wrote, who gets pulled over twice, um, twice, and cops know he was pulled over with no ticket. Okay, let's. Indiana State Police released body camera video showing them pulling over Kohlberger and his father on December 15th. The pair was driving from Washington to Pennsylvania, a trip they had pre-planned. 
Indiana State Police said Kohlberger was behind the wheel when look at his hand right there. Oh, look at that. Let me just take down Mike's comment. I've never seen it so clear. Comments, guys. Comments on that in the live Outside chat. Outside of Indianapolis for following too closely. Indiana's police say at the right time here. of the stop, there was no. Yeah. Look at look at the, look at the scar on the side of his arm. Jesus. And it looks like a six-week-old scar too. It, I can see red at the bottom, like there's still a cut healing. Yeah. And his his hands his hands all mangled too. Yeah. Look at that. No knuckles there so broken knuckles there swollen knuckles there he's got the little club hand it looks just like someone who's been in a punching fight you can see br a black and blue almost i mean i'm speculating you guys i shouldn't yeah. I, i'm speculation just want to fully let everyone know i'm not just saying my opinion i'm putting a banner up now so you guys know i don't know I i'm going to show you guys the the thread, I would love for you guys to go back. So this is CBS Philadelphia, Justin, Indiana State Cop pulls over Brian Koberger for traffic violation in December so that you all know where you can take your screenshots. No information of available for suspect in the Idaho murders that same day. Wow. A Hancock County, Indiana. I want to point something else out that we, we all want to take into evidence too. So see how BK's dad has his phone here and it's very clearly on GPS. You can see the map, yeah. you can see it plugged in. Now, a lot of people were saying this car was a base model that did not have GPS. That picture to me proves that because yeah. why, why would he be using his phone GPS? I just, you know, I think that that kind of settles that score that they're not going to be able to go into the metadata and figure out like, you know, in the Murdoch trial, or I don't know if you know in the Murdoch trial, but in the Murdoch trial, one of the most fascinating things is they could give the most detailed timeline because they were able to say when he drove down to the kennels, when he opened his door, when he stopped, how long he stopped, um, when he was sitting in his seat, if they sensed him, if his seatbelt was on, all those things were told as information, but also Murdaugh was a high power attorney with a $60,000 to $100,000 car, you know, BK has got a 2016 Elantra and it just doesn't have the same capabilities. And yeah. So anyway, that, that was really important because it shows that he doesn't have GPS and Leslie says, uh, his knuckles look like he had a brush in a bruise uh, on it. Yeah. And then Jeff says the dashboard of BK's car proves that he doesn't have, um, infotainment package in his alarm infotainment package includes gps yes. and then sweet and salt he says all scars turn white oh now this is an interesting one wasn't he a boxer so yeah i mean those knuckles sometimes they don't come back but for the most part they pop back up after the hand heals in my yeah. um humble you know exposure to people who have been in fist fights. And then Jeff says, that's a shadow on his wrist, in my opinion. I'm usually the one leaning towards his guilt. Uh, consider the angle of the sun. Okay. That doesn't look like a shadow. <laughs> it doesn't look like a shadow to me either. But thank you, Jeff, for your opinion. Thank you. It says, take photo and zoom. Okay. Here we go. Let me take down that comment. Okay. I think if I zoom in any more, you guys, it's going to pixelate. So I'm going to stop there. But what's interesting about this zoom is that you can see the color very well. So unless this is an altered photo, we can compare the color to the color of the father's skin and face. You can see like there aren't a lot of variations, like pixelation isn't cause, causing blotches and, and shadows and, and black and blues on his face. But then you look down at Brian's hand and you can clearly see the, the part of yellow. I can clearly see a bruise. I can see it almost looks like this cut on the side of the wrist has a sutures on it, but it almost looks like the, the extent of the injury goes down the side of the hand. 
His hand looks like a club. And then Jeff says that's a total shadow on his wrist. No, it's not. Yeah. Uh, Leslie says, Swamp Rose, look at the brutes. Wait, hold on. I'm way up top. Hold on. Let me find Leslie. I see it. I see it clear as day. Like if I was looking at a photograph of a friend, I'd be like, oh my gosh, yeah, look at that injury. I see the bruise. I see the swelling. I can't unsee it either. It... If you look on his left hand, he has a slight bruise on his left hand too. See over there? I'm unable to completely make it out, but his hand does look swollen on the other side too. I see it for sure, scar, major swelling in hand and knuckle, and it's red. They're forcing him to react in some way. Were they forcing him to react in some way? They could have been. The police tactics, you know, we learn all of them and then they come up with new ones. Wait, him receiving stitches reportedly? You've heard anything of that, Robert? Because I did hear uh, something about urgent care, about Ryan, Brian going to some sort of urgent care. I mean, I heard that, but I think the uh, I think the stops were controlled so the uh, FBI could uh, could know if he had any injuries on his hands. You know, I just thought of something, Robert. Remember how BK had that phone call and he was all cheery and he went to the doctor's office and it was after the murders. Have you heard that yeah. story? Well, yeah, I, I heard I heard from. Uh, a uh, story from the uh, WSU st students that, that was under him because he was a, t a teacher's assistant. And they all s said after the murders, he was all happy and, and whistling down the hall and all chipper. And, 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 norm and, I, before the, and I guess before the murders, he was uh, very, very silent and, and everything else and uh, would, grade, would grade harshly on the papers and after the murders, he, he was like lightening up on his grading and he was all happy and smiling. And, and as soon, but as soon as the Idaho four murders were mentioned, he, he went silent like the grave. He, uh, he would, would not even talk about it. Wow. That's so fascinating. Cause you know, he is, this is the subject he's teaching. You would think he'd dive right into it. And it's that behavior. If, if I'm going to go about with what we read in books, I've heard people say after they've killed someone, it's like very calming and relaxing. And like, I, I don't not It's so sick to think about, but oh my God, you know, the, the back to the clinic though, when they say he was chipper and everything, if he's going to the doctors, if they, they would probably document his body. I would think, I mean, Elliot had made this comment. So I just brought it up. Didn't he walk to the clinic just a few days after the incident happened, possibly for Sutures, even if he wasn't there for sutures, though, you would think the doctor's office would note if he had an injury on his arm. He couldn't keep his gloves on the whole time, you know. Let's see what else came to And apparently he went for a physical and a haircut. Both places would have seen it, I would think. And I started giving, uh, it started giving T. T Rev, a little, you know, a little creepy vibes. Crime community that this okay. person. I want, like I want to just stop because bit. I've, I've been meaning to get to this, but I haven't had a chance. I just, while we're talking about this, um, Jeff had emailed me another picture of Brian's hand. So this is the other picture of BK's hand here. So you can't really see it though. I mean, what this does for me is it does kind of take away the red, but I know for a fact that I have, um, my skin isn't as nice as when the direct sunlight hits it. And then when the direct sunlight hits it, it takes away a lot of the flaws. I'm not suggesting that's what's going on here, but I know how powerful lighting is. So, um, it could go either way for me, but what I see in that, in several angles, in several frames seems like an unmistakable scar i don't know yeah. jeff but we're gonna get a side by side um let's see let me get the and other it look, one and it looks and it looks like his sleeve is pulled down 
Yeah, see how his sleeve is down right? Yeah, I'm gonna go back. Okay, hold on. There. See how his sleeve, his sleeve is up right there, right? Mm-hmm. Now go to the other picture. Hold on, I'm trying to take this little comment down so it's not in our way. There we go. Okay. Brand. His sleeve is up. Yeah. You're right. His sleeve is definitely up. See how see how it's pulled back right there, and you can see the scar. Mm-hmm. The next picture, his sleeve is pulled forward. You guys, what do you think? Drop it in the chat. Drop a comment. Let Robert and I know what you think. We're doing this for you guys too. Okay, there's more. Well, let's go back up to the comments we have here. Does anyone know who Josco is? J O S O. No. Somebody says they have a picture of Josco. I don't know what that. I, uh. Jeff says, as a photographer for 30 years, I'm pretty convinced it was a shadow on BK's wrist. Hmm, well, I don't, I don't think it was a shadow. No. And then Leslie says it still looks bruised to me. Mike says he can't tell anything. Mike, and then the other Mike says, for one person to thrust a large knife into a person's body times four, we are talking a couple of times. In my opinion, it was not just one person. This case is so mysterious. And I, I really think this comment is kind of hilarious. I start it. There will never be a show called CSI Idaho. <laughs> Little humor for you.